The Sony A1 is Sony's top flagship mirrorless camera and we're here today to go over the best underwater settings for both photo and video. Nirpon from the Underwater Photography Guide and Blue Water Photo. I'm here today with the Sony A1 and I'm putting together this video to show you guys the best settings for underwater photography and video. I'm not going to go over every single setting in the camera, it's a very extensive camera, uh, but I am going to go over the main settings, the main menus, uh, the custom buttons and what functions I think you should change um, for the best results underwater. I'll also talk about some of the best uh, settings for macro, wide angle, and also video. And uh, I also have an Atomos Ninja 5 right here. Um, and I'll be recording what I'm doing in the camera so you guys can see me making changes to the settings. And you'll be able to um, get a better idea of how things look in the camera. I'm going to try to do everything in one shot, so if I make any mistakes, um, you know, feel free to put it in the comments below. Um, and I'll try to put in corrections in the, in the um, comments as well. Now, I'm also going to put a link in uh, below for the actual settings article. So if you want to read it instead of watch this video, you can go ahead and do that. And with that, I'll get started and let's try to do this all in one clip. Before I start, I also want to say that, um, you know, all this content is supported by Blue Water Photo. So be sure to get your cameras housings, and anything you need for underwater photography or video from Blue Water Photo, and that'll help us produce more of these settings, reviews, and articles. Anyway, before I, I attach the Atomos, um, I am going to go over the main settings and buttons and dials on this camera just so you have a better idea of the layout. Now, I think one of the coolest things about the A1 is that Sony's really got the ergonomics down with this camera. Then it has a new menu system that's been moved over from the A7S III, um, as well as uh, a slightly new set of dials and I just wanted to go over exactly what each one does. So over here you have the FN button. The FN button pulls up a menu on your camera, uh, which I think is the most important menu on the camera. I'll show you guys more about this later, but um, you can basically hit any of your main settings with one button and access them there. You have three dials on this camera. You've got a dial on the back, um, a dial on the front, and a dial on the D-pad, which also serves as a D-pad. You can use these to adjust your triangle of exposure, so your aperture, uh, shutter speed, and ISO. Uh, you also have your mode dial on the front, which has a small lock on it. It's very easy to use. And what I really like about this camera is the the manual mode dial for photos and the video mode dial are right next to each other. So if, I mean the, the um, icon, sorry. Um, so if you flip through the mode dial, you'll be able to switch between icons fairly quickly and through your modes um, if you're going to shoot both photo and video. So I found that very useful. Now one thing that I kind of don't like, um, but that's just my personal taste, is this drive dial on the left side. So you have um, your main drive, which has a lock. Uh, so you can shoot uh, high, sh high speed, um, medium, low, uh, you can set a timer, you can do bracketing, all with this dial here. Uh, it, I believe if you do high plus you'll be able to shoot 30 frames per second at 50 uh, megapixel photos when you're in silent mode. And then what I really don't like is the fact that you have your autofocus uh, type uh, dial here. So you can choose to do autofocus continuous, autofocus single, or manual focus um, on the dial itself, and you can't really do that in camera. So I don't like the fact that you can't do it in camera because this requires you actually having to move, adjust the dial itself underwater, and that can be annoying. Uh, some housings also don't have compatibility with this dial, so you actually have to set your um, focus drive beforehand, whether you want to do manual, autofocus single, autofocus continuous. Now one way that you can work around that is you can actually custom set one of these buttons to toggle uh, between manual focus and autofocus um, 
and that'll kind of help you uh, if you're shooting video, you can set the autofocus, um, lock on your subject and then hit the manual focus toggle custom set button that you set and it'll go to manual focus and then you can shoot your video. Now before I jump into everything else, I will talk a little bit about uh, what settings I think are best for this camera for, <coughs> excuse me, macro and wide angle video, I mean photos and video. <laughs> so when you're getting into wide angle photography, what I recommend uh, with this sensor is starting at an ISO somewhere between 100 and 500. If you're in cold dark water, I would start at 500. If you're in brighter conditions, maybe uh, 100. And that'll put you at a good starting point. This is a high resolution camera, so you will get more noise if you go past 500, um, though you can push it to 640 or 800. When it comes to your shutter speed, I would set it at uh, 1 1 60th to start with. Now this camera can sync with strobes up to 1 400th of a second, but I did find at times it did get a little bit of a bar at 1 400th. It didn't ruin the whole photo, I just had to crop a little bit, uh, but keep that in mind. So I would start at 1 1 60th, and if you're shooting into the sun, if you want a lot more details in your backgrounds when you have a lot of high dynamic range, uh, then I might consider shooting at 1 320 um, or 1 250 or 1 200. But that's a nice option to have with this camera. And then finally for the aperture, this is a full frame camera. So when you're shooting wide angle, I would start at a minimum of F13. Uh, you can stop down even further if you find your corners are getting fuzzy. I find that sometimes is necessary for close focus wide angle. Now, when you're shooting macro, uh, it's more about adjusting your aperture. Um, so I usually set my uh, shutter speed around 1 1 60th, 1 200th. Um, in my ISO, I'll usually put it towards the base ISO, um, or I might do about 100 to 200, um, and I would just leave it there. Uh, so when you're adjusting your aperture, if you want some nice bokeh, then you'll want to stop up, which means you want to open the aperture and shoot anywhere from f2.8, uh, which is very shallow depth of field. I usually wouldn't do that to um, you know maybe f7.1, f9, uh, even with a diopter, f9 is going to be really shallow and give you a lot of bokeh. Uh, if you want a lot of detail in your image, then you're going to want to close your aperture and you'll want to shoot more at about f22, um, so anywhere between f13 to f22. Unfortunately, the Sony lens, uh, the Sony 90mm macro does not um, stop down any further than f22. So that is one of the limitations for me for Sony cameras for macro photography. Um, so getting into video, uh, you have a lot of options with this camera. You can shoot 8K video, you can shoot 4K video up to 120 frames a second, but I think the best place to start is probably shooting 4K at 60 frames per second. Um, I think that's just a good general, it doesn't take up too much data, um, and you can still slow down your video fairly decently uh, when you're shooting at 60 frames a second have good quality video and have really stable video because you've slowed it down. Um, if you want to slow it down even further, if you have a lot of quick action subjects, you can do slow motion, 4K, 120 frames per second video. Um, when you do have that setting for video, uh, keep in mind that your shutter speed should be double what your frame rate is. So if you're shooting 4K at 60 frames a second, you'll want a shutter speed of 1 125th. Uh, if you're shooting 4K at 120 frames a second, you're going to want a shutter speed at 1 250th of a second. So if you are in low light conditions, you might want to consider shooting 4K at 60 frames a second rather than 120 frames a second. Um, now with 8K video at 30 frames a second, you'll want your shutter speed to be 1 1 60th. Uh, next, I would set my aperture for the situation. So if you want um, to be shooting wide angle video, I would do a minimum of f13 on your aperture. Uh, and then if you want to um, shoot macro, you know, you could go all the way up to f22 or you could go all the way down if you want some bokeh down to f5.6, uh, which would give you a lot of bokeh. And uh, then I use the ISO after shutting the shutter speed, setting the shutter speed in the aperture, I'll use the ISO to adjust my exposure. So I will um, adjust the ISO for the situation and I might even put it in auto ISO if I know I've got a lot of moving light and I'm gonna be moving around quite a bit with my subjects going all around me. Now, it won't look as good as just having a standard normal ISO throughout your whole frame, uh, but sometimes you need to do that. So. You want to try to keep your ISO as low as possible, but you will be limited by your shutter speed and your aperture. Um, generally, I try to keep my ISO, you know, 
below uh, 6,000 with this camera, but you could try to bump it up a little more, especially if you are going to shoot um, with a log picture profile, hybrid log gamma, uh, or Cinetone. You may need to bring up your app, um, ISO a little bit higher than you'd like. Um, and then that can be corrected in post-processing. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do when you're shooting uh, video is choose your picture profile. So you have options. You can shoot at the standard picture profile, which uh, means that you won't be processing your image that much in post-processing. Um, basically what you get out of the camera is what you want to present. Um, or you could do a log picture profile, which brings details from your shadows and your highlights and creates a flat image straight out of the camera. When you're post-processing your video, you'll need to actually adjust that image, um, increase the contrast, and bring out some of those details from that flat image, uh, but you will get a generally more detailed image. Hybrid Log Gamma and Cinetone um, are kind of an in-between. Uh, they're not, they don't need to be as processed as um, S-Log2, S-Log3. Uh, and you can use them in situations where you don't have as much dynamic, dynamic range. S-Log2 and S-Log3 are better for situations where you do have a lot of dynamic range and you're not just in flat blue water. Um, so that's something to keep in mind as well. Uh, so play around with those picture profiles and I'm sure you'll find what works best for you and your, um, your uh, workflow uh, when it comes to video. Now from there, let's get into the menus. Um, so I will go ahead and hook up this Ninja 5. Okay, so I am going to go into my menu system and don't be alarmed if your menu system doesn't look like mine. I've set it up already. I've gone diving with this camera. Um, and, but, you know, go ahead and play uh, this video back at half speed if you need to. I'm going to go quickly through the menu system. What I have set, uh, just so you can see what's going on. So. When it comes to the JPEGs, um, I don't shoot JPEG, so you can just leave it on JPEG if you want. I don't shoot Heath either. It's kind of Sony uh, and I, maybe Canon's new um, kind of high-level JPEG. Uh, so I set my camera to RAW, um, and you know if you're shooting a camera at this level, you are going to want to use RAW uh, files, and you're also going to want to edit in RAW, um, which really helps with underwater white balance, which can be um, pretty tough sometimes to get right. Aspect ratio, you want 3-2, that uses the full, you know, frame of your sensor. Um, for your video, what HS, S, and SI is, they're different codecs um, that compress your files a little differently. You may need to use a different codec for a different um, reason, so feel free to check out the full article um, below, uh, the full settings article if you want to read more about those codecs, but I tend to use, um, let's see, S, uh, 4K, and this gives you the options to shoot 24, 30 frames, 60 frames, and 120 frames a second. So you could try 60 frames a second, and then you're going to want to set your um, bit rate. So if you're going to shoot uh, log profiles, you'll want to be in 422 10-bit, and what this means is it's going to sample colors from more pixels than 420 and you're gonna have more color options than you would with 8-bit. So if you're doing a log profile, 10-bit 422 is definitely what you wanna do. Now let's go back into the menu. With the APS-C um, shooting, basically that allows you to crop your video uh, while, you're, while you're shooting, or your photos even, and it'll crop the sensor so you can get a little bit more reach when you're shooting macro, um, and sometimes wide angle if things aren't getting close enough. Now, I keep it off generally, but I can also set a custom button on the camera where you can press it and it'll automatically go into APS-C mode. So generally I keep it off so I can get the full width of my sensor, but you can definitely use that. Uh, color space, it's kind of up to you and, and what you do in your post-processing. I use sRGB. Um, some people process with Adobe RGB, but just remember that um, whatever the final file is, the final JPEG when you're processing, uh, you're generally going to want it to be S or sRGB for web uh, purposes, and Adobe RGB is good for printing. Um, lens compensation, I kind of left these at the default. Uh, distortion compensation, I turned off. Um, chromatic aberration compensation, I left it on auto. I've noticed some Sony lenses can have a lot of chromatic aberration problems. Uh, this allows you to format your... Um, 
your card slots, and I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> I don't know what's on here, um, but I don't want to be formatting right now. Um, let's see. This just tells you where you're going to record everything. So uh, I only have one card in the slot, but you can choose what slot you're going to record photos on, what slot you're going to record video on. And some of these I'm going to um, just be skipping if they're not important, just to save time. Like I said, I'm not going to go through every single thing. Okay. Um, this allows you to name your files uh, and number them. Uh, this will, yeah, we can skip through this. Copyright info. Again, you can set your copyright info. You can set some metadata in here. Um, I just kind of generally ignore this when, I, when I'm shooting a demo camera. Um, oh, memory recall. So you do have the option to upload your settings uh, onto one of your um, one of your uh, card slots, um, one of your actual memory cards, and then you can actually up put your memory card in the camera and then upload those settings. Um, you can also register. You have on your mode dial uh, one, two, and three. Um, now these can actually be full custom settings, so you can register a uh, custom setting set to the 1, 2, and 3 mode dial uh, if you do want to quickly flip to your, let's say, your wide angle settings or your macro settings or your video settings. So that's pretty important, uh, so keep that in mind. Now continuous shooting speed. This tells, uh, when, when you have your dial on the left side of the camera, it, the drive dial specifically, it'll say high, medium, and low. This actually sets the actual uh, frame rate of the burst shooting when you're at high, medium, or low. And I kept it at the default settings. So timer, we're not going to use timer, we're not going to use bracketing underwater, uh, no need for interval shooting, no need for the pixel shift, silent modes. Okay, so this is something where I actually custom set in my FN menu, but you can um, set it in your main menu as well. But basically what the silent shutter does is it takes a photo without using the mechanical shutter so you won't hear anything. It's going to do that with a sensor readout. Now that sensor readout can introduce rolling shutter, it can also introduce banding under uh, incandescent light. So keep that in mind, but one of the cool things about this camera is that you can use the electronic shutter to uh, shoot with strobes. So that's a really cool new feature um, and you'll need strobes that actually have a TTL converter that tricks your camera into thinking it's a Sony flash. Um, but if you do want to move to silent mode, you could do it in here. Uh, I'm leaving it off for now. And again, this is going to control your shutter. So you can either do mechanical, electronic. I like to actually adjust this in my FN menu when I do adjust to uh, silent mode or, or not. Um, and generally, I actually only adjust the shutter. I don't really change the silent mode settings. Uh, now this will just, um, this is telling your camera to um, take a photo without a lens, and I'm actually going to disable that, and then this is your cam telling your camera to take a photo without a card. I'm also going to disable that just so it'll tell me when a card is not there or a lens is off. Uh, Anti-flicker settings, um, so again this is for your electronic shutter, if you're getting flickering from incandescent light, you can mess with your uh, flicker settings and you can actually do variable shutter which changes your shutter speed um, to match uh, an incandescent light. So you can change it instead of doing 1 250th of a second you could do 1 256 if you really needed to. Um, but we're not going to do that. We have strobes. Uh, let it, let's see, steady shot adjust. Um, yeah you can leave that in auto. Steady shot is going to be controlled by most lenses. Uh, but I generally recommend leaving that on. And basically what that does, that's your image stabilization. So uh, if you're shooting at really low shutter speeds, um, it's going to reduce the motion blur from camera shake. And um, that also works with strobes. If you are shooting video handheld, you're going to want to leave that on too. Now, one of the ways that the A7S III is a lot better for video is that they actually have an active study shot mode. So I was hoping to see that in the A1, but I don't see that. Um, and it's just a more advanced uh more advanced stabilization. Zoom speed, you can skip that. Grid line displays, if you want grid lines on your on your display, that's fine. Um, I, I choose not to. 
Now this is one of the most important settings you can mess with underwater. I recommend customizing it in your FN menu, but basically the live view display, uh, you want to set that off when you have strobes, and when you don't have strobes, you want to set that on. And what that does is it takes your exposure settings and applies it to what you're viewing through the camera. So obviously when you have strobes, um, everything that you're going to view is pretty dark because the strobes are going to light up the scene. So in order to see what you're actually shooting, you're going to need to turn the live view off. All right, ISO, you're gonna wanna set this in camera, not in your menu, so you can ignore this. The range, leave it at the default, 50 to 100, 2,400. Um, EV compensation, uh, this allows you to, to set how much you can use your EV compensation by. I don't generally use that when I'm shooting underwater, so you can skip that. Metering mode, so if you have strobes uh, and you're using a TTL converter especially, you're going to wanna have your um, camera on spot metering. So I have it on spot. Uh, I also link that spot um, to the focus point and that means whatever I have in focus is what my strobes are going to be exposing correctly. Um, that's especially useful with a TTL converter. Um, so I, yeah, I, I link it to the focus point rather than the center. All right, so fill flash is what you're gonna wanna set for strobes. Um, you can also put on rear curtain if you want to do a slow shutter speed, blurry photo with part of your subject frozen, but again, you can ignore that uh, if you're just doing normal photography, not slow shutter stuff. Um, now, my exposure compensation, I have, yeah, ambient and flash. Um, wireless flash is off. Uh, yeah, I think we're good there. And, I think anytime you don't know what something is, yeah, you just press the delete button on your camera and it'll tell you, um, but I left that one in the default. Red eye reduction can be off. All right, white balance. Again, this is something you're gonna wanna set in the FN menu. Uh, so it's not something I usually do in the menu system. I do leave that on auto. All right. Um, yeah, this can all be left at default. Turn your D-range optimizer off. You want to be, you know, it's going to make adjustments to your file when you should be doing that in post. Picture profile in, in photo mode is off. In video mode, that's going to be an FN menu uh, customization. Creative looks standard is fine. Um, all right, so D zebra displays are used to show you where things are overexposed in your, in your um, menu system. I mean, sorry, not in your menu system, where things are overexposed in your image. Uh, for video, you can turn that on. You don't really need it for photos, except uh, if you want to view it in your image review afterwards. So I leave it off for photos. All right, um, this is one that you can uh, kind of decide what you want to do. Now, um, what this, this basically tells your camera to either take a photo or to wait for your um, camera to lock fo focus on the subject before taking the photo. Now, it depends on how good your lens is. If you have a really good lens, when you're autofocus single, you want it on AF, um, but I'm putting it on ballast emphasis because I'm using some Canon lenses with a uh, Metabones adapter. And then uh, for continuous mode, you basically want it on release, which forces your camera to take the photo whether or not it's in focus. Um, but again, I'm putting this on balanced emphasis just because of the camera or the lenses that I am using they are a little bit slower right now. So, uh, autofocus tracking sensitivity, this just tells you how quickly your autofocus tr tracking point is going to react. Four is fine, I think. Uh, AF illuminator, you want to turn that off. It's not going to do you any good under, in a housing. Um, it's not going to help your autofocus. Um, aperture drive is fine at standard. Um, you can leave this at default, that at default. Uh, your autofocus area, again, this is something you're going to want to set in your FN menu um, as a customizable thing. You're going to want to change it around. Uh, I have it on expandable spot, but um, with the lens that I have currently, I have a Sony 90 and I actually want to shoot autofocus continuous. And then I will be setting my focus area to tracking and that is your tracking right there. So, um, and that just, it's very, tra autofocus tracking is very good in Sony cameras. Uh, focus area limiter, that's just telling you what kind of focus areas you can pick. Again, uh, default, default, this changes the color of your autofocus area button. Not a big deal there, I left it on default. Uh, default, default. 
Um, sorry, I'm having trouble reading this because of the Ninja 5, but let me open that up and I'll see what it says. Does not display... Oh, okay, yeah, I want it to display the frame, so I leave that on default. Uh, yeah, this, this can all be left on default. So circulation of autofocus points basically means that uh, your points, when you set them to circulate, they will um, move across like that. Uh, when you set them to not circulate, they will, they will end at the edges. So I usually choose to set them to not circulate. Okay, now, um, yeah, I leave my face and eye priority on. Uh, underwater, I put it on bird tracking, and honestly, it hasn't been working. So, you know, next time I'm going to try animal. <laughs> um, but I wouldn't expect the animal eye autofocus tracking to really work underwater, not like the Canon R5. Um, all right, so subject selection. Oh yeah, uh, we're not shooting people underwater, so I, I unselected human. Uh, right and left, I'm leaving that on auto, uh, but that basically lets you choose between your left and right eye. Um, yeah, okay, so this can all be left on default. Uh, also on default, default, default. Um, actually, I may have turned Oh, okay, actually I turned this one off. So basically what this does is if you're in manual focus mode, it'll automatically zoom in onto your subject. I found that kind of annoying. So I'm actually keeping that off and I'm using autofocus peaking uh, display to really show me where my autofocus is in manual. So peaking display I leave on. Um, I leave it on medium and then color red. Red shows up pretty good underwater. Uh, but again, that's, you know, when you are shooting in manual focus, um, you'll be able to see, for example, oh, it should light up red, but that might be because I'm recording onto a monitor, so I'll look more into that, but um, yeah, generally you'll want to leave that on, and maybe that's, yeah, it's on, okay. All right, um, this is just saying where the playback's coming from is coming from your, uh, well, my slot one, because that's where my memory card is. Um, this can all be left on default, default, default. Again, this is all default. Default. Uh, this is your connection to smartphones, Wi-Fi. Again, not really that important right now for underwater shooting. This is all default. Um, you set your language, uh, your, the time. Um, you can reset your settings. I wouldn't recommend that right now. <laughs> And this is where we get into the fun stuff, your custom settings. Now you've got your custom photo settings, custom video settings, and uh, yeah, uh, let's get into, and these are your keys, so in your photo mode, video mode. Um, now this allows you to customize buttons in your photo mode. Now the nice thing is your camera really maps out uh, how the buttons look. In, in the menu, so you can see what menus you are custom setting. So some are, the default are actually gonna be pretty good and then some you might wanna set. Um, now I won't go over every single custom setting option available, it really is up to your workflow. Play around with it and get familiar with your camera is the top recommendation that I have. Um, but let's go through a couple of mine that I've made. And I don't make that many because I really rely on my FN menu for everything that I need to be there, so. Um, and that's just me, that's my style. Now the control wheel, um, ISO is fine. This is gonna be when you're spinning the wheel, you want ISO and then you can do shutter and aperture um, on the other two dials. Uh, IAF settings, so I custom set my auto exposure lock button because I don't really use that it's for IAF. And what that means is when you press it, it's gonna look for an eye in your scene. Um, it works very well for people 
hasn't been working for me for animals. So this is something that I might actually change in the future, but I'm testing this camera, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, AF on, this is your AF on button. That's the default, I leave it there. Movie shooting, uh, that's also default. It's a red button on your camera, I leave it there. Um, shutter type, so... Oh yeah, this lets me switch between my me mechanical shutter and electronic shutter. For this camera, I actually think that's a pretty good set setting to have. This one I don't really want, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to pick a better setting to set for my delete button. Uh, so let's go with, and what I do is I'll just kind of go through each one of these settings, look for something that I think would be very useful to have. Um, and right now, honestly, I'm not seeing all that much useful. Uh, Okay, image quality settings. Ah, here we go. So this is going to be my APS mode. So now you can see I'm switching between APS and full frame. So this is a really nice custom setting to have because you can crop to get a little bit more reach in your image. Um, and yeah, I just enjoy having that there. All right, so uh, let's see. So this just goes into a few more of the buttons. Um, I set my joystick so that my autofocus will go back into the center when I click it. Uh, I don't have anything set in the center. I like to use that one for normal operation. And again, um, I think the ISO is useful on the right side, but I haven't set any of these other buttons because I think I'd like to use them for normal operation. Uh, these are your mostly your dials. And then I also have, um, I think I have, yeah, I have another drive mode uh, here and it doesn't work. So this is one thing that annoys me about the A1 is that you can't custom set your drive mode buttons. Uh, you have to use the drive dial. So that to me was kind of frustrating and I could, for the sake of demonstration, change any of these to something else. Now let me just see what, um, this is just the display. So, oops, sorry. Sorry about that guys. Um, all right, let me do this for the sake of, all right, let's see something else that'll be useful. And this is really how I go through and just set all my custom settings. Um, and again, this is why I think the FN menus are actually a lot more valuable than the buttons themselves. I like having everything in one place. So I think in this case, I'm going to do live view display. Let's do that. So that's a useful thing. I can turn live view display on and off just with one button. All right. So I think you guys get the point there. Uh, let's see if I've done anything for video. Some video tends to be a little bit more, um, you know, more useful having these cut custom buttons. So right here is an important one that I, I put, this is your autofocus to manual focus uh, selector toggle. So when I'm in a video mode, as you can see here, I can select between, right now it's on manual focus. Um, there we go, I'm in autofocus now. So I can toggle between autofocus and manual focus as you can see on the left side there. Um, but let's go back to our custom settings. Uh, and again, I'm going to have my APS mode, APS-C mode on the delete uh, button, but you can put it really anywhere you want to. So yeah, it's really just about, you know, going through these and looking for the right buttons for your workflow. I recommend spending an hour or two really doing that. Uh, now, yeah, these are just some additional custom menus. I actually haven't gone through this one. I don't think they're that important. All right, so what I really want to talk about is the function menu. Now on this camera, you can see when I press the FN button, my main menus come up and these are the functions that you want within one button reach um, of your shooting situation. So you want to be able to be like, okay, click the FN menu, there's my ISO, I want to go down and up. Like you want to be able to move quickly. Uh, so with that in mind, let's take a look at the custom settings for the FN menu. 
So it shows me both photo and video, and this is how I've done it. I have my uh, animals, there, there's still for me, there's a little bit too many um, custom buttons that I could, custom uh, icons I can put on my FN menu. So some of them I don't really need that bad, but some of them I really do. So uh, for photo modes, I have my autofocus area mode, which is probably the most important. That'll tell me if I'm using spot focus, tracking, wide focus. Um, so that's very important. Uh, on a normal camera, I'd have my drive mode, but again, you can only really use your drive mode through the drive dial. So this is actually a useless um, function for me other than the fact it tells me what drive mode I'm in. I have my white balance here. I've got uh, my face and eye subject selection. So if I'm moving between people and animals, this is something I would do for topside. Uh, if I want to focus on people, then, I'm, then I can select people or other animals and I can select other animals. Um, your peaking display, again, this is for manual focus. It'll show you where your autofocus is. Uh, I have steady shot. Again, this is only going to show me if steady shot's on. It won't allow me with most lenses to actually change this uh, sh steady shot and turn it on and off. Um, this puts your camera in silent mode or not. Uh, and again, here's the mechanical shutter. So I can choose mechanical shutter or a silent electronic shutter. And that's what I use um, when I switch between the two settings when I'm shooting with strobes. I have my metering mode here, my ISO in case I can't, some housings don't have compatibility with that real dial as I mentioned, my flash mode and my live view display. So that allows me to turn my live view display on and off. For video, it can get a little bit more interesting. So I have first and foremostly my picture profiles and this allows me to change between log, standard, HLG, Cinetone, um, any of that. I have my, uh, peaking and also uh, the uh, peaking level and again some of these are duplicates they I can change them to other things but I just have too many spaces on this FN menu for me to fill um, you want to have your metering mode in here your autofocus mode as I did in the photo mode your white balance uh, steady shot your zebra displays will tell you um, basically uh, where, where in your video is being um, overexposed and you can choose the level. So is it uh, this much of your video or is it going to look through um, all of your video? So it's basically saying how much overexposed is too overexposed. And then S and Q, so this lets you choose your frame rate and that's really important um, because then you can choose between 120 frames a second, 60 frames a second, 30 frames a second. And then finally your shooting mode. So you can choose to shoot manual video, auto video, aperture priority, anything like that. I think this is also a very important function. One thing that I think is actually missing um, that I was really disappointed to see that was not included in the um, FN custom sets was the frame rate and bit rate for video. If you look through this, cause let's say we wanna change our peaking since we can do that. Um, it's a redundant function as of now. Uh, I've looked through the menu and I can show you that when it comes to image quality, you can set your frame rate, you can set your APS-C setting, which we already set in our delete function before. Um, but I don't believe I see any, yeah, this, this just uh, is your, this will set what slot it's going to record media to. Um, but there's nothing that really allows you to set your actual your actual 4K versus um, 8K versus, uh, and your bit rate as well. So I've, I've been kind of disappointed in that. And that's something I'm continuing to look for, but I am not finding. And I think that's going to need to be a firmware update in future uh, firmware update. After you set your FN menu, you can go down to different uh, sets for stills and movies. And what that does is that allows you to pick settings that will not be uh, remembered when you switch between video and photo modes. Now, honestly, I selected all of them because my settings are vastly different underwater between photo and video. So I want the camera to remember what I had last when I was shooting photos, when I'm shooting photos, and what I had last when I'm shooting video, when I'm shooting video. So that's an important thing. Make sure that you have all of these checked. Okay, so this, uh, basically this setting tells you what you'll see on your monitor uh, and also on your viewfinder when you're looking through it. So you can custom set that as well. And then 
A lot of these you can leave on default. Uh, this messes with your touch operation. I mean, technically underwater you could turn off touch operation, um, but I leave it on. It's not a big deal. It's not like you're going to be touching the the house or the camera in the housing. So these can all be left on default. Default. Um, auto review here, I leave on two seconds. And that means when I take the photo, it'll show me what I took for two seconds so I know that everything looks good. Um, auto, this, so this is basically setting when, you, when uh, your camera will sleep. Um, and I leave that off for my, own, for my own self, but everybody has their own opinions on that. Okay, again, all of this can be left on default. Um, this can all be left on default. Anti-dust. Huh. So this is where you can clean your sensor. Um, so it doesn't really work that great. I still recommend doing a manual cleaning. And these allow you to put in your own custom settings. So that right there is the menu system. Again, uh, it's a really long menu. Uh, it's a lot of talking for me. So if I messed up anything, please put it in the comments below. We'll respond, we'll get that corrected. Um, but I hope this just kind of shows you what's important in the menu system and what isn't. Um, really, when it comes down to it, it's going to be your custom functions in this yellow tab, your autofocus settings are moderately important. Uh, that's in this blue tab your main exposure settings, a lot of this is controlled in your camera. And then this red tab here is where your main settings, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get those right. So you can go back to this part of the video and rewatch that if you need to. Finally, there's a few things that I just wanna show you guys when I'm operating the camera. Uh, let's see, for autofocus tracking, when you half press on your subject, if your subject moves or if you move this focus box will follow it. Um, and I just wanna show you how sticky the autofocus tracking is in the Sony. It's pretty sticky. Um, and it's, it's honestly some of the best autofocus tracking on the market. So I really like using autofocus tracking when I'm uh, photographing fish, any moving subjects, or I just wanna recompose. Uh, generally, I leave it on there. I'm a little bit lazy, but if you have a lens like a Canon uh, lens on a Metabones adapter, it'll be a little bit slower. You might not want to use autofocus tracking. You might want to put it on autofocus single. When I put the camera in autofocus single, uh, you can't use autofocus tracking, so I tend to pick um, expandable spot uh, for my focus area, but sometimes if you have really quick subjects and you just want your, your camera to figure out what's going on, you can put it on zone. But as you can see, it's already confused here because the, the image area is too wide. So I'm gonna go to spot. I think my camera's just having a little bit of trouble focusing in this low light. All right, so real quickly, I just wanna show you guys how to switch to your electronic shutter. I went into the FN menu, went to electronic, and I'm putting silent mode on. So now when I take a photo, the camera literally did not make a sound. And that's a pretty, cool feature to have. Uh, now your fish won't be scared of the clickety clack underwater, it'll be scared of the strobes instead. So I'm not sure how much it's actually gonna help you. But one thing to keep in mind, when you do have electronic shutter on and you are in silent mode, you can shoot up to 30 frames a second. And if you have strobes um, that can handle that, especially at lower powers, then you can shoot really quickly uh, with some really quick subjects. Keep in mind, if the subjects are too quick, you will get some rolling shutter, which could be an issue. Um, now, one thing that I also want to answer, and this is kind of the final thing that I'm going to cover, uh, is what every video shooter wants to know about their new camera. How do I take an auto white balance? In the Sony, it's pretty easy. You go to your FN menu, go to white balance, custom set your white balance here, click the right button, and now it says set, click OK, and there you have a box. Um, I'm gonna now click OK again, and I just did that on my countertop, but my white balance has been set. So that's how you set a custom white balance. I think that's a great place to stop. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at sales at bluewaterphotostore.com. Um, 
And uh, if you like this video, please give it a like. It really helps us with the uh, YouTube algorithms. Um, subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions at all, any comments, anything that you do with your Sony A1 when you're shooting underwater that I didn't suggest that you would like me to suggest, leave it below. We'll answer. Um, we always take a look and read, at the, uh, read those comments. Um, and again, I just wanted to mention that we also have a full settings article in writing. So check that out below. Uh, with that, we hope you have a great time shooting this camera. We hope this helped uh, at least a little bit. If you have any questions or you're looking for an underwater housing, reach out to us. We're always happy to help and have some great dives with this camera. It's one of my favorites. It's definitely my favorite Sony camera at this point. Um, so I think you'll be pretty happy with it yourself.